kids. We're at the Cornell Botanic Gardens today. Do you know this story, Make Way for Ducklings? Well, we're going to read this book later today. But first, I want to tell you some duck jokes. And if you look in the background behind me at this pond here, you might see some geese floating by in a little bit. So, do you like duck jokes? Here's the first joke. What do you get if you mix ducks with fireworks? You get firequackers. What time do ducks wake up? The quack of dawn. What do you get when you put six ducks in a box. You get a box of quackers. What shows do ducks like to watch on television? Documentaries. Why do ducks fly south in the winter? Because it's too far to waddle. Did those jokes quack you up? Now, I would like to show you a video of some ducks that I took at my neighbor's house. So today we're at a neighbor's house and I'm filming their ducks. Can you count the ducks? How many ducks? All the yellow ones are ducks. One, two, three, four, five. That one's going over to the water. And then, do you see that white one right there? That's a turkey. So I'll try to get close to the turkey for you. There's the turkey. Looks kind of like the ducks, doesn't he? Oh my gosh, croquet in the making here. Do you hear him peeping? Yeah, right. How do you guys set it up? Do you just put wickets wherever the heck you want to? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> They're very cute. There's that turkey. And there's the little ducks. See how they're getting their food out of the container there? And then they go over to that container and they drink water out of that one. Yeah. They're sipping yep. the water. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping their head up to, to sip it. Like <laughs> well, if you think about it, it's only one and then get in the yeah, water. It's the it. ugly duckling. <laughs> it doesn't know it, but it is. And they got a heat lamp there. See that hot Thanks, lamp? That keeps them warm on such a cold day. Today's a little Bob, chilly. That's right, it's Bob. That's right. I forgot Bob. Bob. Those ducklings are really cute, aren't they? Did you hear my neighbor when he was talking about the ugly ducking, duckling? He was referring to that turkey, the little baby turkey that was in with the ducks. Have you ever read that story, The Ugly Duckling? That's another fun book to read sometime. Do you know very many facts about ducks? I'll share with you some fun duck facts that I found in Science Kids. The duck is a number of species of Anatea Dea family of birds. They're related to swans and geese. Ducks are mostly aquatic birds, living in both fresh water and salt sea water. And they're found on every continent except for Antarctica. A male duck is called a drake, and a female duck is called a hen, and a baby duck is a duckling. That's the story we're going to read later about ducklings. Ducks are omnivores. They feed on aquatic plants, small fish, insects, worms, grubs, and more. People often feed domesticated ducks bread. Have you ever brought bread over to the Botanic Gardens or down to Stewart Park and fed the ducks? That's a lot of fun. Dabbling ducks feed on the surface of the water or on land, or by ducking their head underwater. Have you ever seen a duck put its head down in the water and try to get some algae or plants? 
Along the edge of their beak is a comb-like structure called a pectin. It's slippery. The slippery food filters the nutrients out of the water. Ducks are curious and friendly creatures. They've been domesticated as pets and farm animals for more than 500 years. All domestic ducks are descended from either the mallard or the muscovite duck. The most common and recognized species of duck is the mallard or the wild duck. And that's what we're going to have a story about later, about mallard ducks. It's a dabbling duck that lives in America's Europe, Asia, North Africa, and has been introduced to New Zealand and Australia. The male mallard has a glass, glossy green head. Have you ever seen a mallard duck? Shiny green head on them. Has gray wings and a belly. Well, the female is brown speckled plumage. They look very different. The female's dull so that she can blend in where she's sitting on her nest and not be seen by predators. Mallard ducks have a molting season. They're vulnerable during this time as the molting stops them flying. And you'll hear about that in the story. Mallard ducks live up to five to 10 years in the wild and eight years in captivity. Here are some pictures of mallard ducks. Now that you know all about ducks, let's read a story about ducks. Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCloskey. See the duckling coming out of its egg, hatching little by little. Here it comes. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were looking for a place to live. But every time Mr. Mallard saw what looked like a nice place, Mrs. Mallard said it was no good. There were sure to be foxes in the woods or turtles in the water, and she was not going to raise a family where there might be foxes or turtles. So they flew on and on. When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any further. There was a nice pond in the public garden with a little island on it. Do you see the little island? The very place to spend the night, quacked Mr. Mallard. So down they flapped. Next morning, they fished for their breakfast in the mud at the bottom of the pond. But they didn't find much. Do you see their heads down in the water and their tails up in the air? Just as they were getting ready to start on their way, a strange, enormous bird came by. It was pushing a boat full of people, and there was a man sitting on its back. Good morning, quacked Mr. Mallard, being polite. The big bird was too proud to answer, but the people on the boat threw peanuts into the water, so the Mallards followed them all round the pond and got another breakfast, better than the first. I like this place, said Mrs. Mallard as they climbed out on the bank and waddled along. Why don't we build a nest and raise our ducklings right in this pond? There are no foxes and no turtles, and the people feed us peanuts. What could be better? Good, said Mr. Mallard, delighted that at last Mrs. Mallard had found a place that suited her. But... Look out! squawked Mrs. Mallard all of a dither. You'll get run over! And when she got her breath, she added, This is no place for babies with all those horrid things rushing about. We'll have to look somewhere else. You see the boy on the bike? So they flew over Beacon Hill and round the State House. But there was no place there. They looked in Lewisburg Square, but there was no water to swim in. 
Then they flew over the Charles River. This is better, quacked Mr. Mallard. That island looks like a nice quiet place and it's only a little way from the public garden. Yes, said Mrs. Mallard, remembering the peanuts. That looks like just the right place to hatch ducklings. So they chose a cozy spot among the bushes near the water and settled down to build their nest. And only just in time for now they were beginning to molt. All their old wing feathers started to drop out and they would not be able to fly again until the new ones grew in. Remember when we learned about molting in the duck facts? But of course they could swim. And one day they swam over to the park on the riverbank and there they met a policeman called Michael. Michael fed them peanuts and after that the Mallards called on Michael every day. After Mrs. Mallard had laid eight eggs in the nest, she couldn't go to visit Michael anymore because she had to sit on the eggs to keep them warm. She moved off the nest only to get a drink of water or to have her lunch or to count the eggs and make sure they were all there. Do you want to help Mrs. Mallard count her eggs? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're all there. One day the ducklings hatched out. First came Jack, then Cack, and then Lack, then Mac, and Knack, and Ooak, and Pack, and Quack. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were bursting with pride. It was a great responsibility taking care of so many ducklings and it kept them very busy. One day, Mr. Mallard decided he'd like to take a trip to see what the rest of the river was like. Further on, so off he set. I'll meet you in a week in the public garden, he quacked over his shoulder. Take good care of the ducklings. Don't you worry, said Mrs. Mallard. I know all about bringing up children. And she did. She taught them how to swim and dive. She taught them how to walk in a line, to come when they were called, and to keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels. Can you think of something else that might have wheels on it? When at last she felt perfectly satisfied with them, she said one morning, Come along, children, follow me. Before you could wink an eyelash, Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Whack, Pack, and Quack fell into line, just as they had been taught. Mrs. Mallard led the way into the water and they swam behind her to the opposite bank. Do you see them following her in a line across the river? There they waded ashore and waddled along till they came to the highway. Uh-oh! What's gonna happen next? Mrs. Mallard stepped out to cross the road. Honk! Honk! went the horns on the speeding cars. Quack! went Mrs. Mallard as she tumbled back again. Quack! 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 went Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Ooak, Pack, and Quack, just as loud as their little quackers could quack. The cars kept speeding by and honking, and Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings kept right on quack, quack, quacking. They made such a noise that Michael came running, waving his arms and blowing his whistle. He planted himself in the center of the road, raised one hand to stop the traffic, and then beckoned with the other, the way policemen do, for Mrs. Mallard to cross over. And there she goes, walking right in front of the car, with all her little ducklings following after her.
As soon as Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings were safe on the other side and on their way down Mount Vernon Street, Michael rushed back to his police booth. Wonder what he's going to do. He called Clancy at headquarters and said, There's a family of ducks walking down the street. Clancy said, Family of what? Ducks, yelled Michael. Send a police car, quick! He's going to help them. Meanwhile, Mrs. Mallard had reached the corner bookshop and turned into Charles Street with Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Nack, Uwack, Pack, and Quack, all marching in line behind her. Look at him go, right past the corner bookshop. Everyone stared. An old lady from Beacon Hill said, Isn't it amazing? And the man who swept the street said, Well now, ain't that nice? And when Mrs. Mallard heard them, she was so proud she tipped her nose in the air and walked along with an extra swing in her waddle. Does she look proud? When they came to the corner of Beacon Street, there was the police car with four policemen that Clancy had sent from headquarters. The policemen held back the traffic so Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings could march across the street. There they go, marching across the street. Teeny tiny, right there. right on into the public garden. Inside the gate, all turned round to say thank you to the policemen. The policemen smiled and waved goodbye. See all the ducks saying thank you. When they reached the pond and swam across to the little island, there was Mr. Mallard waiting for them, just as he had promised. Do you see Mr. Mallard? He's right there waiting on the island, and here they come across the water. He's waiting. The ducklings liked the new island so much that they decided to live there. All day long they follow the swan boats and eat peanuts. And when night falls, they swim to their little island and go to sleep. The end. Did you like that story? I love the way the mother duck took care of her ducklings and how the policemen helped them to cross the street so that they could get to the pond and be safe. I couldn't find any Bible verses about ducks, but I did find a verse that this story reminds me of. It's in Matthew 23, 37, and it says, How often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Just like the hen takes care of her chicks and the mother duck protects her ducklings, God wants to take care of us. When life gets a little hectic, just like it did for the ducklings when they were crossing the street, God wants us to go to him in prayer. As we trust him, he will lead us to a peaceful and calm place just like the island in this little story. I'm so glad that God loves us and wants us wants to take care of us. Aren't you? Thanks for joining us. See you next time.